Hey guys, how you doing? I'm sorry, my arm's in the way. I thought I would be. I thought I'd have that under control before I start. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to start a new um, painting. And so I wanted to do a background. And of course, that's going to just keep going out unless I have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of stencils. <clears throat> As I knocked everything on the floor, because <laughs> why not? Okay, so I'm going to lay a bunch of stencils down all over, all over, all over. If I would put things away when I was done with them, what a world this would be. And I don't need them to be right on, you know what I'm saying? All right, let me just keep that so it stays focused. I think I showed you this beautiful owl one, but I'm going to use that for something else. I just want background. Now, I showed you in the previous video. Oh, let me grab one of these. Use that one now. I showed you in the previous video how to make your own sprays. For some reason, my light is really. Uh, let's do it like that. Um, and this is the spray that we made in the other video, which I will either link it on this video or I will link it below in the description. You'll know as you're watching it now. And all this is is acrylic paint and water. And remember I told you guys make sure you clean the uh, sprayer off and, and take off the lid, spray it. When you're done with it, spray it out and then you should have, <laughs> now watch me contradict myself, it should just spray like normal. Oh my God, so if I don't clean this dust this weekend, I swear. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this color. Now these are stencils from Angie's Antics and I will put that link below or you'll see it pop up right here. Um, she actually has some new stencils coming out or out now and these are the six inch uh, stencils. I love her stencils. As you know, I've been using them in all my past videos, uh, most recent videos and uh, I will put the link, go check it out. They're a great, I think they're great prices and they're very great quality. And I, I mean, I've used and abused these so much. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know me, I don't tell you to get anything unless I love it because I don't want you wasting your money. And I don't think this is a waste of money. So I'm shaking it and I'm going to spray. Now I wanted to make this a little darker, but I'm just going to go like this just randomly. But I'm not going to um, darken it because one of the things that I do, and I know not everybody does this, is I go light to dark. I know a lot of people do that. I know a lot of people don't. But I do. And I think you get a much better... And I'm just going to dab it. I'm going to dab it off here. Now what you can do is um, I think you get much better print and... Uh, but, you know, it, it builds up the color from the bottom. Now, I'm going to spray it one more time, but have a piece of either an, a, of a printer paper, a cardstock. You know, I love buying cardstock when it goes on sale. I like all colors, but I usually buy white. Um, and have, have that sitting next to you or your art journal, whatever. So when you spray, and it's coming out, you can see it's coming out fully. So when you spray, you can pick these up and this is just going to look, you know, my spray is a little more wet than I want it to be because it's lighter. And I'm going to pick these up and set these over here for now. And we're just starting a quick background. I'm just giving them a little bit of a wipe, but you can just turn these over on another piece of paper and start, or your art journal and start another background. And I'm going to be using these again. But you can see you get different, it's just texture we're looking for, more than it being, uh, you know, straight on. Now I'm going to take, if you don't have a heat gun, use a hairdryer. I say this all the time. I think I might even, I, I've not realized that not many people have a hairdryer or heat gun. Um, I was thinking about, I don't know, maybe in the month of October I'll do it going and buying a hair dryer from the thrift store and doing a giveaway with it. Let me know down below if that is something that you would 
want as a giveaway. I know some people have the hair dryers and they have the heat gun and you only need a heat gun if you're going to emboss. But I have so many new people on my uh, YouTube and I'm so blessed. I'm so thankful. And I get so many messages. And a lot of people, you know, don't have a hair dryer or, you know, you don't need a heat gun, like I said, to dry. The hair dryer works much better actually to dry your paint. Because it has more of a, you know, you can make it a little bit cooler than a heat gun. And it has more range to blow around. One of these days i got to bring up my hair dryer to show you guys. But I wanted to do a giveaway. So let me know down below if you want a hair dryer giveaway to help blow your stuff dry. Or do you want a heat gun giveaway? Just leave me your comment below. Let me know. I don't mind. I like helping out people. I'm doing smaller giveaways now. I have a giveaway going on now at knittingandthings.com. And uh, it ends, bless you, honey. It ends in two days, I believe. So I'll put that link down below, Angie's link. If I didn't put Angie's link in the <laughs> in the uh, video itself. If I, could, if I could remember to do that, I would. But uh, I'm trying to, I see that my camera is a little... Okay, we'll just leave it like that. But can you see? Look how great that is. And that's dry now. And you just get, and I can turn it whatever way I want. And you just get this great kind of pattern going on. You know what I mean? Love it. Okay, so I'm going to take some more. I'm such a stencil freak. I love stencils. Again, these are from Angie's too. I have this one. Which one didn't I use in this one? And now I have another circle one. Yeah, here you are. I'm going to use these too if it will come up. My hands are not working correctly today. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these. This one's called Bubbles, as you can see. And then this one I'm going to put here. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to move these so it's halfway on. And I'm going to show you when you spray. Now, if you don't have spray, but you have acrylic paint, you can just use it. Use a makeup sponge or a dab or whatever you have, paintbrush for that matter, and dab on your acrylic paint to get your stencils going. I'm using some uh, spray inks. Let's see. We all know I love delusions, delusions. But I want to go a shade darker than what I got going on. Then the blue. So I'm just going to use this is fresh lime. From Dilutions. I get these from Blitzy. Um, when they go on sale, you can get them at your stores. And this one just doesn't want to come out. But that stinks. Why not? Now, if you have a problem, I might as well show you this. Now, if you have a problem with your paints, I didn't clean the uh, nozzle well. Let's see what happens. Yes, it happens to us all. It all happens. Yes, it does. Okay. So I'm going to take a paintbrush. I'm going to take, what am I going to take? All right. I'm going to take my little squeezy thing. I forget what these are called. It's like a little. All right. And I'm going to put some, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'm just going to squeeze a little bit right here on my mat. If you're using wax paper or whatever. And then I'm just going to kind of set that there. Move this out the way. Should put the lid back on because you know me. Everything will end up green. I'll have to put that in hot water later. Okay, now I'm going to take my... Um, <coughs> oh my goodness gracious. It wasn't even a sneeze. That was a cough. But it felt like I had to sneeze. I don't know if that's ever happened. I'm going to take my um, scruffy brush. Scruffy. If you don't have a scruffy brush, use whatever you have. Use a makeup thing. Use whatever kind of paintbrush you have. Use... Whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to dip it in here. And I'm going to 
ounce. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. Just make sure, you know, a few of them have, you know, get the color. Now you can see it's wet, so it's, I can see it going underneath the stencil. I'm not caring because I'm starting a mixed media uh, background. So now I'm just going to kind of rub my brush over because whatever is left in my brush or on top of my stencil, I can run it down. Okay. You see how easy that is. Not big, no big deal. Whatever color you have, whatever brand. And look, we got some color. Now, if you want, you can be fancy, and you can turn it this way, and take your paper towel, rag, whatever you have, and just push down. And we're pushing, and we're pushing. And lift it up. Now, not much came off because I used the brush. And I'm just going to give it a quick, this is all I do, a quick wipe. Nothing, unless I'm using molding paste or a, some sort of paste. Um, I really don't wipe them off. I don't care. Now, let's do a different color there. I have a little bit of this green left here. And I'll just kind of randomly put it in here. Run it so it has a little bit of the green underneath. But let's pick another color. What about some fuchsia? Will you spray, my friend? Yep, oh dear, you spray. All right, so I'm only gonna spray that little bit because I'm gonna take my brush and do the same thing. Now, you can leave it the way it is. You know, really spray your stencil and it'll be vibrant, but this does it, this makes it vibrant too. And you're just extending your product. I hate to like continue to spray spray and waste my product. I don't know. I guess because it's I'm tight on money and I love these sprays. <laughs> I love all my sprays I have, but you know, I mean, I have homemade sprays as well, but I just, why not? And it gives you variation in color. Now I'll turn this over here and I'll take my rag and I'll just give it a wipe. And we'll see what we get. It gives you a little, you can see, a little faded. You can see that. If you want, you can wipe it off. Wipe it towards your paper or art journal or canvas or whatever you're working on. And it just gives you some shazamness. All right. And now the nice thing with most spray inks is that they are reacted again with water. So I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of water, tap it off. I know it's going to come out running, but what I'm going to do is kind of take this edge off of this where it's oversprayed. You don't have to. I'm choosing to. And I'm just going to give it a wipe just so it's not... I don't care that it smears the pink like it is. And you can really spray. But I like that because I can do something with that and it not be... Um, you can go again. It just doesn't have that hard edge on it. I just don't like that hard edge in this particular one. Sometimes I love the hard edge. It depends. You know, it depends on what your mood is. But I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. No big deal. And then I'm going to dry. I should, I need to get a napkin, paper towel. Now I'm going to dry them. Now these are reactive, which means that unless you're doing all of your own sprays that you've made out of uh, acrylic paint, that type of thing, even watercolor, if you may use sprays using watercolor, you're still going to have them be reactive. So um, what you can do, which I enjoy doing, but you can take some of your gesso, or you can use, I'm going to use just a little bit of this. This is just Antique White by Ceramic Coat, the Delta. I use this all the time. And I'm just going to put a few plops. Because now I kind of want to mute it down a little bit. We're, do, we're doing layers, so it's not, you know, 
and I wet my brush just to kind of get it a little bit more pliable and then I dry and then I just run. And I'm just adding a little bit. I'm not adding a lot. It doesn't matter which way you paint it. And you can see that blue underneath. Now you see how that's reacting there? Re-reacting. But if you add some more water, it'll make it more. I'll show you. Because I want some of that to come up and not all of it. All right, so I'm kind of putting that base down. Now, whatever this acrylic paint covers, it will make it a little bit more permanent. A lot of these um, I learned the hard way, <laughs> which I'm sure we all learn that way sometimes. I'm going to add more water. You see how much water I'm adding just to get all the edges. Um, sometimes, whether you put gesso down or paint, it'll come through still, some of these sprays. And it's certain colors too. It's not even, why am I out of focus? It's not even that it's um, dilutions in particular. It's certain colors. Some dilutions don't do that. But now what I'm going to do is give it a quick wipe. And you can still see it coming. It's coming through. The paint was light. And now we're muting that background. But you'll still see some of the background. And if you get to the point right here where it's like, oh, it's a little bit too, you know, muted, just wet it. Wet it up here. It's to be fun and be sloppy. Who cares? And again, you can do this in your art journal, on a canvas, whatever. I just want it to like be a ghost kind of print. Now I see that I'm going to need a little bit more of my blue and I'm just going to spray it. I want more of it to kind of peep through and I'm going to do a little bit right there. And this is the fun of doing these because you always, why am I out of, con out of control? Why am I out of control? And I'm just going to do another green, don't work. I remember this now. What color, what color, what color? We're going to do some, no, we're not going to do black. Never mind. I was real excited there for a minute and I thought, mm, no. How about some funky fuchsia? Well, that's some funky stuff. Funky, funky fuchsia. Now, that's quite a bit of color. Not really exactly what I'm wanting. So I'm going to take a piece of, okay, deli paper. And I'm going to lay it on. And if you don't have deli paper, use printer paper, use mixed media paper, use whatever kind of paper you want. And make sure you don't jam into your things that you draw. Now, can you see the wrinkles that are coming up? That's pretty cool. So I'm going to dry this for a minute because that ink's coming through and it's smearing it and I'm happy. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to give it a little dry. I'm going to lift it off. Look at that, how cool. I'm going to set that over there to dry. And look what we got. Again, you can do this with your paints that your uh, sprays that you make, your spray paints, whatever you have. And now I'm just going to dry it. I'm going to leave it that dark though, because I like that kind of, it's almost like a oil painting in a sense. And again, you can take a paper towel and crunch it up. You could take a piece of paper and crunch it up. You can use your deli paper and then you can get these kind of um, markings. I do need the, I want a little more green in here. So I'm going to let that be. And I'm going to open my green and kind of splatter it just like this this is the one that wouldn't spray so I'm using it in different ways I don't care use your brush use whatever you want I just want some of that green in there 
Now, if I say, oh, you know what? The green's not really coming out the way I want it. Now that I did some drips on there, I can take my paint brush. That's a little damp and I can kind of just spread out that green. And then it's just adding that color. And I love when you, I'll show you, when we do it, I'll show you the big part. You know, try to take it in some of the white spots where it's a little lighter. So there's no rhyme or reason. It's just do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Now you see here, I want to know why my thing keeps doing that. Why it keeps going out. Because that's not enjoyable. All right. Why do you keep doing that to me? Okay. You see right here. We have some green. Now, if I blot that up, it separates the color underneath, which is really cool. I like that. So like underneath, like the, the green comes up and you get these dots. Let's see if you can see it. Turn it this way. See how it looks? It's almost like alcohol ink in a sense. Let's do it one more time on that pink so y'all can see. So watch right here. Keep your eye there. Oh, it's not coming out now. Come on, buddy. I'm just going to sprinkle some more. Okay. Now, if I take my rag and I just lift it up like that, do you see how it makes it? I'll lift it up. And show you. Look how cool that looks. It's almost alcohol inky. Very, very cool. And it doesn't matter what way you have your mixed media canvas. So those are a few colors that we're using there. Now I want to make, I want to do something It's like a pearlescent. So I'm going to grab my perfect pearls. And what it is, if you can see, that's the iridescent all through here. So you really got to shake it good. You should always shake your inks and spray inks anyway. But I'm going to shake it. You can hear there's a thing in there. If you get dilutions or you get another uh, spray ink that doesn't, even your acrylics that you make your own or watercolor, whatever spray paint you make, Get like go to the dollar store and get kids glass marbles or if you have beads and put them in so it helps shake it to kind of get it all around all through. Now I'm going to spray some of this. Now you might not get a chance to see the iridescence. We'll see. Now remember it's going to reactivate the color that we have down. But it's just a pearlized color. It's going to make it a little pearly and shiny. Let me just take a real quick turn. And again, I'm going to just blow dry. And you see how that's reacted? It's kind of making it look when you blow it. It's like you're using a straw. Now, you can use a straw. That would be cool, too. And blow it out like that. Or turn it upside down. Let it run. I can see that. I'm, I'm hoping once this is dry, you guys can really see the pearlescent that's coming. You can see down here a little bit. I can see with the reflection. So I'm just going to give this a quick once over. Especially here. I think what I might do. Oh, yeah, you can see it on there. Okay, let me just. I think I'm going to just turn it, sit it up like this. For a second and leave it run. And I can see it's running down there. Just gonna wipe that off. Okay. And you see, can you tell now how it pearlescent is? I'll hold it up in a second. 
And this is a very simple, this is a simple way to do a background, mixed media background. And if, like I said, if you don't have the spraying solutions or any of those glimmer mists or whatever, it's okay. Use your acrylic paint. And if you don't have a spray bottle to put it in, I'll show you what you can do. One second. show you this because I can see right here you can see it really good Let's see if you can see it see it see it yes so that's all over the canvas now isn't that cool looking so that's like you know so once we put our uh, main picture up on here we will have a really cool background that is it that is all it took to do a background and look how cool it looks. It looks watercolory. It looks uh, very muted, but very beautiful. This I love. I love the way this came out. I know it's hard to like really understand, like see it on camera, but it's just with the line, the darker lines and, and all that from the paper when I took it up. I just love it. So these colors are really great together. Now let me show you really quickly, because I don't want to keep you here all day. All right, I'm going to set that back there. And then let me grab. All right, I just need some paper. Paper, please. Oh, I don't want to do it on that. Organization. All right, so watch. This is what you can do with your um, well, acrylic paint. Take your acrylic paint. Oh, this one's really sucky. Tim Holtz paint. It doesn't work. Look how thick this is. This is ridiculous. All right, but I'm going to squeeze some here. All right, we got some there. I'm going to smear it because we just need whatever. I'm just going to show you a demo. Just squirt a bit of your acrylic paint out. Okay. And then take your brush with some water on it and go like this. Okay, now you have a spray ink, but guess what? It's right there. Now let me show you something. Yep, let me show you something one second. <laughs> Organization. Okay, so here we have a stencil. Here we have our watered down paint. I'm just gonna very easily. Now you don't have to put as much water as I did. You can do less, more, whatever you want. I would have probably put more paint down, but I just kind of want to show you. You don't have to have springs. You don't have to have empty bottles. Right? Okay. I'm just going to run it over and then lift it. And look, you got it. Now, Mind you, I'd made it a little wetter. I probably should have had more color in there, but I mean, probably isn't even accurate. It doesn't matter. And then I just turn it over, give it a wipe. And then when you dry it, now this isn't a canvas, this is paper, so you know it's gonna sink in a bit unless you gesso it or put a coat of white paint or whatever underneath. I'm just gonna give it a quick dry. And if you're, if you're like, oh, you know what? It's a little too puddly. Just wipe it up with your paper towel or your rag, your paint rag. And you got your background started. That's how simple. So you don't need to have the sprays and all that kind of stuff. Always go to your craft store and do Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then get black and white. And you can make any of these colors, um, any spray color, any color like this out of those main colors. Uh, you can get Michael's brand paint, Craft Smart. Uh, AC Moore. I mean, they all have their own store brands now. So, and they go on sale quite a bit. 
<clears throat> so you can do your own very, you know, your very own background like that. And how cool is that? You know what I mean? You don't have to start. I know I've got so many new people and they're, they're always like, I don't have the supplies. I don't have the supplies. You know what? You don't need the all the supplies. Just get your basic acrylic colors. I will be doing a, um, within the next month, I'll be doing as well another, uh, probably acrylic tube uh, giveaway, you know, where you get, I, I get the packet with all the colors in it and it's the squeeze tubes, um, which you can do the same thing with this, but it'll give people who, you know, need acrylic paints and, and who can't go out and buy them or are just starting out, it'll help somebody out. So, I mean, we never can have too much paint, can we? So that's it. That's pretty much, you know, where we're at. Um, it's very easy. And if you do your paint, um, on your, you know, what's it called? Uh, I just lost the name of it. What do you put paint in? Not easel. Mm, you know, where you squeeze your paint in. I can't think of what's called palette. I think it's called paint palette. Um, you can also, you know, you could put your paint in that and you can water it down just a little bit, make it thicker and use it, you know, in, in a million different ways. I lost my train of thought because I couldn't think of the word. And, um, but you can mix it on wax paper in your palette, on your craft sheet, whatever you have. And, and you're not any worse off than if you had sprays. You're still getting the same the same thing. So I hope this was helpful. I get a lot of questions about this. And um, again, very, very simple. Very simple, very easy background. That if you don't have sprays, you can just use paint. And you get the same great things. So now we'll let this dry all the way. And then what I'm going to do is figure out what to put on top of it. And I don't know yet, but I will figure something out. And I don't know why this one keeps going blurry. So I hope you all have a great day. Be kind to each other. You never know what battle somebody else is fighting. And I will see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys.